Yo, what's up? Circuit Score here, and today I'm going to show you guys how to activate an official, unofficial version of multi frame generation on 40 series cards. And when I say official, unofficial, this is a trick that I found in order to use essentially in game frame generation in conjunction with smooth motion, which is driver level frame generation, using a preview driver that just released for the 40 series cards. So this will allow us to get up to 3x frame generation, which would be triple the frames. So if you had a 60 FPS without any frame generation on, then we would be targeting 180 FPS. And when I say unofficial, this is kind of like a workaround because it's not actually multi-frame generation support like the 5000 series has. We are going to be leveraging, like I said, a driver level frame generation on top of an in-game frame generation. And we're gonna be testing today two different games. We're gonna be testing Witcher 3, as well as Cyberpunk 2077. And a quick note regarding my last video, a little misinformation. I said in my last video, we were testing Witcher, where we tested just smooth motion frame generation at a driver level. And I said that Witcher in-game doesn't have frame generation. I did not have my Witcher game updated to the latest next generation update, which does include in-game frame generation. However, even with in-frame generation settings, those tests are still valid. If you want to go check that video out, I will leave that in the description below. Additionally, I'm not going to be going through how to install the preview driver. I went through a guide in my last video on how to do that on your 40 series cards. And finally, one last thing. If you do install the preview driver, it's not even really even in like a beta state right now. This is like an alpha build. So update at your own risk. But if there's any issues, you can always roll back your drivers to a more stable version with your 40 series card. So let's get into some testing. So the first game we have here, like I said, was going to be Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. And in order to activate smooth motion frames, you are going to have to go to the NVIDIA app. This is the frame generation that we're trying to activate on a driver level. And then go over here to this little graphics button, graphics tab. And then we're going to hover over. We're going to find Witcher 3 here. And then this setting to turn on and off is smooth motion right here. And you can turn it on. However, for the sake of our testing, we're going to do a quick benchmark with no frame generation on. So first, we're going to get a baseline with no frame generation. And then we're going to see what kind of gains we're going to get. We're going to be targeting, like I said, a 3x multi frame generation. All right, so here we are in game, and we're gonna just go through some of the settings we have set up right now real quick. I'm gonna be testing this at both 4K as well as 1440p to see what kind of frame rate we can get. So I have everything set to max, and my system is a 4080 Super with a 9800X3D and 32 gigs of RAM, so it's a pretty beefy system, which is why I like to test these at 4K a lot of times. So I am using the RT Ultra settings here with DLSS on with a performance mode. And in the NVIDIA app, I have forced DLSS 4. Everything else is maxed out at Ultra. And then display here. We've got a resolution of 2160p. And right now we have frame generation turned off. So let's go ahead and get our baseline. And one more thing to keep in mind, if you are going to be using this driver, it does not work with the MSI Afterburner Reva Statistics Tuner overlay. So it would work right now. This is my fancy overlay that I like to use. It gives me all the information. But unfortunately, once we turn on smooth motion, it just kind of starts glitching out the game. But we'll use it right now for just the baseline testing. So right now, here you can see that my GPU is maxing out at almost 100%. My CPU is around 20 to 40. And we're getting about 65 FPS. Let's go ahead and just kind of come out of this town a little bit here. Do a quick test riding our horse. We're getting about... 67 to almost 75 in some areas. Almost 80, actually, in some areas. All right, so now we've got our baseline. 
go ahead and quit and go ahead and turn on smooth motion. And really quick, I actually forgot to get our baseline here at 1440p. So we already got our baseline, like I said, at 2160p. So let's get 1440 and see where we're at. This is, again, like I said, with no frame generation on. All right, so now we're closer to like about 100. Then we'll go ahead and do that same run real quick. Take our horse. 113, 116, 120. All right. So about 100 to 120 with 1440p. All right, now in order to get this to work, what we're going to have to do is go to our NVIDIA app. And then we're going to want to go over to our graphics tab here. And like I said, this is and this is after you've installed that preview driver. You have to have that preview driver for this to work. We're going to scroll down here. And we're going to activate smooth motion. Turn that on. It should also activate low latency mode on ultra. So now we've got driver frame generation turned on. So let's go ahead and launch the game. All right, so you can see in the top left that um, it's actually not as bad as I've seen before, but our render latency is kind of going all over the place, which is why we have to use the NVIDIA overlay. And actually, it's not too bad, but and maybe they've actually updated this in the MSI Afterburner. I'll have to do some tests later. But just for the sake of keeping things consistent and keeping our tests consistent with our performance, let's go ahead and actually enable the NVIDIA overlay when we have smooth motion turned on. So in order to do this, you can set this up by going to Alt-Z. And then down here, there's a statistics one. And I already have mine all set up the way I like it. All right, so I had a quick little crash there when I went into these NVIDIA settings. But OK, it looks like it's good now. And like I said, we can go down to this one here and then we can toggle our statistics through the NVIDIA overlay on and off. And when I said I had a quick, quick crash, I mean, that's what I mean is this isn't in a stable state yet. So again, just if you're trying to do this, just proceed with caution. So I'm going to go ahead and use the shortcut here, the Alt R moving forward. So just do Alt R and there we go. Got our NVIDIA overlay. And it actually says it, you can see up in like the very top right, it says smooth motion is inactive. However, we know that's not the case because our frame rate is now at 106. So we haven't actually fully doubled our frame rate, but we got pretty close because we were around like about like 60 FPS through here. So right now this is on a 2X and just kind of run through here. Okay, looks like we're getting a solid 100 to 110. So now we're gonna go ahead and activate the official unofficial frame generation, multi-frame generation, I should say. So we're going to go into our graphics. I'm sorry, we got to go to the display settings with this game. And then go down here to DLSS frame generation. Pick that on. And this is the test at 4K right now. So there we go. We're getting about 160. So the target we were trying to go for was 180. And right now we're getting anywhere from 150 to 160. Almost there's 170 going through the same run. However, there were times when we were coming up through here and we were getting almost 80. So it's not going to be a true 3x, but that is just because of the efficiency of frame generation. But as you can see, it does work pretty well and everything is really smooth on my end. And unfortunately with YouTube, I can only record at 60 FPS. So on your end, you're seeing a 60 FPS, but on my end, I am seeing a very smooth anywhere from 145 to 170, depending on the area I'm in over here. So now let's go ahead. And for the sake of testing, we're gonna go and check out 1440p. 
display. Okay, change this to 1440p. And hopefully it doesn't crash. All right, we're in. And now you can see we're getting up near uh, 230 FPS. 220, 230. So absolutely wild. And game still looks really good too at 1440p. 1440p I think is the sweet spot for a lot of people that are, you know, trying to run their system. And another thing to keep in mind is I have a capture card that I was using with a dual go, PC go. setup. However, since it is capped at 120 FPS with that capture card, I am recording this on my actual gaming system. The performance would actually most likely be a little higher if I wasn't recording right now at 4K. But still, 250, 240, like this is absolutely crazy. So now let's go ahead and test out Cyberpunk. All right, and same thing here. Let's go ahead and get a baseline without any frame generation. All right, so here we are in game. These are my video settings right now. Pretty much 2160p is all you really need to know. And the graphics, I have them cranked up to the max. I'm also using the DLSS Super Resolution Transformer model with DLSS 4. Also on a performance mode, performance set. Right now we have frame generation turned off to get our testing and our benchmarks. Texture quality is maxed out. And then everything else here. See, should probably use the mouse. Controller is very sensitive. But everything else here, I have everything turned on except for film grain and chromatic aberration because I can't stand those settings. But everything else is maxed out out including the screen space reflections we got this on psycho all right so let's go ahead and load into the game and we got our benchmark all right so here we are in game and we're getting it looks like roughly 54 fps it's a pretty stable 54 fps okay 52 54 And I did do a little testing with this earlier. So the difference here is um, without recording, I was getting about 60 FPS. So it's like a five FPS difference when it turned with it turned off and me recording. All right. So now let's go ahead and exit the game and go turn on smooth motion. All right, so now we go back into the NVIDIA app here. Let's go ahead and activate Smooth Motion. In this game, I wasn't able to test 1440p because I was having issues when I turned it on. It was actually giving me a lower frame rate, so I'm not really sure what is going on with that. But for Cyberpunk, we're just going to be testing this at 4K. So I've gone ahead and turned on Smooth Motion and then Low Latency Mode turned on to Ultra. All right, so here we are back in game, and you can see we're getting around 85 to sometimes up to 90 FPS. And one thing to keep in mind, you can see in the very top right corner of the overlay, it says SM inactive. That stands for smooth motion. And for some reason, this does not show an accurate reading in both Witcher and Cyberpunk. But we can tell it's working because we are getting a higher frame rate than we were getting baseline. Another thing to keep in mind, as you saw right there, the car just came out of this like little brighter area on the other side of the road, and it was causing all kinds of ghosting. So let's see if we can see that again. Okay, that one, it didn't do it as much, but I do think that is because of the smooth motion frame rate. So let's go ahead and go and do some quick driving around here, do some testing. So we're getting about like 80 or so, 75 to 80. And once again, because I'm recording, I think typically I would be getting closer to 90 when I was doing the testing. So right now this is at a 2x. Let's go ahead and activate our unofficial 3x by going into our graphics setting here and just turning on in-game frame generation. Hit apply. 
And now we're getting about 110 to 108. So it seems like this game, it doesn't seem to work as well. Because if we were getting about 60 FPS, we would try to be getting about 180. And I guess going back through this tunnel here, we're getting anywhere from 110 to 120 to 130. But it seems much more unstable than Witcher. So we are still getting some pretty good gains on this game with our 3x, our unofficial 3x, I should say. And this is, you know, again, in a very preview state. So hopefully when this comes out in a more stable state, we will actually be able to take advantage of this little workaround to get a multi frame generation. Another thing is I am not noticing a whole lot of latency. I am using a controller for the sake of recording this video to keep things a little smoother. But even if I switch over to my mouse here and my keyboard and mouse, like it is really not bad for the input latency. Let's do a little more driving around here, get some better readings. So it is kind of jumping around anywhere from 105 to 125. So we are getting kind of getting in a sense almost 3x because if we were recording Earlier, we were getting about 45 to like 55. So it's somewhere in the ballpark, but it's not a true 3x at this point. But it's probably closer to, like I said, to maybe maybe two and a half times the frame rate when it comes to frame generation. And actually, other than that car that came through that little lighted area and that like had all that ghosting, I'm not really noticing much ghosting anywhere else in this game if I kind of move my mouse around here and real quick like let's go ahead and actually just exit the vehicle kind of run around see if we notice any like bad ghosting or anything and honestly it's really not bad at all yeah, this is pretty wild No one's scattering it. Oh, they're a light run. <laughs> it's like a bead walk. <laughs> oh, there we go. There, that's how to scare everybody. All right, so yeah, enough having fun. What are these ladies doing? We're getting about 110, 115. And again, this is at 4K resolution. I was having issues with 1440p. I don't know why. Like I said, it was actually putting the frame rate lower with 1440p. And that could be another issue with this driver. It's in a preview state. Overall, this is pretty solid. So anyway, that'll do it for this video. If you guys like this kind of content, I do a lot of uh, performance tips and tricks. Uh, lately, I've been doing a lot of reviews on different mod lists for Skyrim. And I'm also trying to get into more content for like PC tips and tricks, different performance guides and whatnot like we're doing in this video. So if any of that interests you, consider subscribing to the channel. And as always, have a wonderful day.